Hi all, Kraken Latte here. In part one, you saw exactly how I organized my guild bank, but I promised you a closer look at the items now, didn't I? Lots of work goes into keeping this guild bank stocked, but I think it's well worth the effort. There's quite the list of items to get through, so prepare yourself for a rambly tour of the Kraken Latte guild bank. So let's start with the first tab, Utility A. Real original, I know, but these are the most used items. So let's start from left to right, and that way we can keep things a little organized. Starting with Potion of Deep Home. This is an item with only a five minute cooldown that teleports you directly to Deep Home no matter where you are, even in the Shadowlands. Kind of powerful if you think about it. Now, why would I think the Potion of Deep Home is important? Important enough that I keep two rows of it instead of one. Well, think of it as like a second hearth. When you're in the temple that's inside Deep Home, there's a portal that goes directly to Stormwind or Urgamar. And since you can keep an unlimited amount of these on you, well, it really is like having another Hearthstone. Pretty handy. And it's a must have in my opinion. Next, we've got the Talent Tomes, that I call them anyways. The Tome of the Quiet Mind is for level 59 and under, and Tome of Still Mind is the new one. That's basically 60s. It says 51 plus, but it's a little expensive, so 60s only, in my opinion. These are the ones that let you swap your talents around for a minute. Now we've got some fried bonefish. This one is like the new bear tartare. The speed food. I've not actually used the fried bonefish yet, so I don't know if there's a speed difference between the two, but it's here. <laughs> Next, we've got sea mist potion. These are super nice. They turn you into a cloud, and it's a, it's a reduced fall speed potion. So I can jump off of high surfaces and not die. It's also real handy to get over water because it's kind of like a levitate, basically. It's basically, you know, yeah, it's basically priest levitate, except prettier. Sorry, priests. Now we've got the avalanche elixir, which is very similar to this, except it turns you into a literal rock. It doesn't slow your fall, but it turns you into rock and you don't take damage when you land. And in fact, you do damage when you land, so this one can be a little dangerous. But it's really fun turning into a rock and smashing into the ground and not dying, so would recommend. Now we've got the Draenic Water Walking and Draenic Water Breathing. These are both really self-explanatory. Since uh, the lovely Strider mounts don't water walk anymore, I make sure to keep these on hand, and the water breathing happens to be nice too. There is a helmet version of this, but it only lasts for 30 minutes, or whatever it is, so I like the, the uh, elixir better. And then we've got the Shimmer Skull Diving Suit. This is a, well, a, a swim speed increase by 100% for 15 minutes, which pairs really nicely with the uh, water breathing elixir. These are very handy to have, especially when leveling. Now we've got the Potion of the Hidden Spirit. This is the Shadowlands version of the Invisibility Potion. And the only one usable by level 51 plus, since all the other Invisibility Potions no longer work on 50 plus characters, which kind of sucks, but you know what? It's what it is. Now we've got the Potion of Psychopomp's speed. I'm a little unsure if I'm saying that right, but it's the new speed potion for uh, level 50s and higher. So 70% speed, that's nice. Now we got drums. Again, this is the Shadowlands drums because it's kind of the same thing. All the drums from uh, BFA and older don't work in the Shadowlands if you're 51 or higher. In fact, I think it's 50 or higher. <laughs> now we've got the Galpin Glider Kits. Everybody knows about these, right? The ultimate falling speed reduction Whatever you want to say it, it's a lifesaver. You must have these. You must. And that is tab one. These are the most used items, except for those who haven't used them yet. But I'm sure that sure, sure we will. So here we go. Tab one. So let's move right into tab two. That's Utility B. Real original name again, I know, but you know what? I like it, so deal with it. <laughs> All right, starting with the very leftmost item, we have Pinch Whistle Nitro Fuel. This lovely alcoholic beverage lets me kill myself. 
Yes, exactly what it sounds like. Since we can no longer use the character unstuck method to get yourself quickly out of instances, I like using this. Pop down a cooking fire or a little Ragnaros pet or Pierre, take a swig and burn to death. <laughs> Sounds real lovely, doesn't it? Yes, I know you could just make a group and leave it, but you know what? I think this one's fun. So next we've got the Feast of the Fishes. This, the sole purpose of this is to turn you into a fish. Now, what would you possibly want that for? Well, kind of like in tab one where we have the diving suit and the water breathing elixirs, this does something similar. You do the same thing, except you turn into a teeny tiny little fish. Cool, right? In fact, I think it might be faster than, than the uh, diving suit. So this is fun and it's had its uses. Like, uh, it's kind of like a think of it a druid form almost. It's pretty handy actually. Now we have Fighter Chow. I know this is from Legion, but I still find it a uh, rather helpful actually, even if it is just, you know, very minuscule healing nowadays. I still find it useful for classes like, I don't know, some of the weaker classes I feel like that need some out of combat health. And here's the bear Tartar, like I mentioned earlier. I don't know if the uh, pot uh, fish, the bone fish, is better than that or not. I have not actually tested it or and compared speed, but it does the same thing in, in theory. These uh, give you a speed buff after you kill things, so that's nice. And we've got some crispy bacon. This is to buff these three foods. When you eat some food from Legion and eat a crispy bacon afterwards, you can extend the duration of it by up to six hours. So you could be a fish for six hours if you really wanted to. <laughs> so real handy. Another reason why I'm still hanging on to the uh, bear tartare, because six hour uh, speed buff makes it worth it. Sliding onto the next little column here, we've got, in this case, ethereal pomegranates. This one changes often, depending on the expansion, but this is basically the mana slash health food row. So like, you know, if you're a healer, you're in a dungeon, crap, I don't have any way of getting my mana back, you can pop down a guild bank, snag a stack of pomegranates, and get it back real quick. So that's what that's for. Now we've got the Potion of Soul Purity. This removes curses, diseases, poisons, stuff like that, which we don't use this very much, but uh, it is handy. Like in some raids, you might need it. I haven't found a use for it just yet though, <laughs> but I'm sure I will, right? Right. Now we have the Potion of Unhindered Passing. This is similar to the Adranic Living Action Potion, which is really handy for stuns, movement and pairing stuff. But the Adranic Living Action that, and all the other similar ones to it uh, got nerfed. You can't use them above level 50 anymore. So this is the Shadowlands replacement. Let me just give you a little secret. Really handy in Entaurus. Mm hmm You probably know what boss I'm talking about, too. So now we move into what I call the PvP corner. Whoops, as I go AFK here. My bad. <laughs> PvP corner. Potion, nope, right here. Blackened Warg Steak. There we go. So this is an old food from either Wrath or Cat. I think it's Wrath. The Blackened Warg Steak lets you track humanoids for an hour. See why I call this a PvP corner? Really handy never know when you want to track humanoids. That's pretty much all the uh, playable races, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, now we've got the Potion of Shaded Sight. This slightly increases your stealth detection for 10 minutes. Why would you want that? Well, it's handy in PvP. It's also handy for farming old mobs, such as for uh, certain reps, like the uh, insane title ones, where there's old mobs that are stealthed. I don't really know how else to put that does exactly what it says. Now we've got tracker snacks. This one does the same thing as this, except it tracks beasts. Now yes, I know if you're, you know, like a hunter, you don't need these two foods, but you know what? Not everybody's a hunter. So being a paladin and being able to track beasts or humanoids, very handy. And the nice part too is since it's a food, you can use it with Potion of Shaded Sight. So like these two here, the warg steak and the shaded site, 
You can use those together for farming old content. Trust me, it's handy. And this one's for beasts. Same thing, but for beasts. Alright, now we've got Elixir of Detect Demon. You guessed it, does the same thing, except you can track demons. Not so useful anymore, but it was really handy when Legion was live. So when I go back to farm some uh, Legion content at some point, this will be nice. Now we've got the Elixir of Camouflage. Now this does kind of the opposite. This is, uh, this keeps you from being tracked. So if you're in PvP area and no, you don't want to be tracked by someone like a hunter or, you know, someone resourceful like me, you can suck down one of these and not be trackable. So, really handy. It's still usable. It works at max level. Just saying. Alright. Elixir of Detect Undead. Does the same thing, except it's undead. Same thing as these ones, except it's undead. Now I have this, uh, not next to this one. Because, as you can see, they are the same icon. Same. Thanks, Blizzard. So I have to keep them separate. Otherwise I get confused and grab the wrong one and don't track the right thing and... You know, you get the idea. Anyway, so that's tab two. Let's move right along to the next. Moving right along to the third tab, it's Utility C. Guessing the names now? Good job. <laughs> Let's start on the left again. This is what I call the farming section. So we've got Demon Steel Stirrups. That lets you interact with objects, well, like, uh, you know, herbs and ore, while mounted for a couple hours in the Broken Isles. Really handy, which is, you can see why, it's for the farming stuff. Under that, we've got all the glove enchants, for Legion specifically. This is the Legion row column. This is not a row, this is a column. Legion mining, herbalism, skinning, surveying. It increases the speed of all of those for your gloves. Right next to that, and to separate these two because they are visually identical, we have Dark Moon Firewater, which does the same thing, but these, uh, even though they don't stack with the glove enchants, they don't, I know, I've tried, trust me. Uh, you can use them in instances, because for some reason, when you try to use these in instances, it doesn't increase your speed, because for some reason, Blizzard does not consider instances like raids and dungeons within a zone in that same zone. So like Ataldas are, that's not in quote-unquote Zandalar. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is what it is. So that's why these are really handy. All right, Monal Hardened Stirrups. That is the Kul'Tiris slash Zandalar one of those. You can interact with herbs and ore on Kul'Tiris or Zandalar. And again, it's the same thing. All the glove enchants for mining, herbalism, skinning, surveying, and crafting. Was a nice little addition here. I wish they would have continued that. That speeds up your crafting and gathering of all this stuff. So. Now we've got the gems. Which aren't necessarily for farming, but I put them here to separate the Shadowlands crafting stuff. So we have the Straddling Jewel Doublet. Doublet? Doublet? Not quite sure how to pronounce that. This increases is a gem that increases your speed by 5 for each Shadowlands gem you have socketed kind of cool. This does the same thing except for health. For every uh, Shadowlands gem you have socketed, it increases health. Not directly, it's a, it's restores your health, I should say. Now we've got the uh, a couple more speed items. Gems, rather. The Straddling Sage Agate increases your movement speed by 5%. And it's unique equipped, so you can only have one. Which is why the Straddling Viridium comes in handy, because that's the 3% one. And you can have one of that one as well. And this one is also unique equipped, which is a bummer, called the Natant Rubelite? Natant? Nation? I call it Nation't, but I know it's probably wrong. This increases your swim speed by five. So that's handy. And like I briefly mentioned, this is the Shadowlands Gathering enchants. I have so many because they didn't separate them like they did before with herbalism, mining, skinning. It's just gathering for all of them. So I gotta have a whole bunch to cover all of my characters when they need them. And uh, my best friend's characters as well, because we share. Moving on to the next column, we've got the Electroshock Mount Motivator. 
While I strongly disagree with what this actually thing is, this thing actually is in theory, it's really handy in the game. So, these uh, increase your mount, mount's movement speed by 10% for 10 seconds, stacks up to 5 times, nice little burst of speed, but I don't like the fact that you're actually shocking your mount. That's mean. That's mean. Anyways, now we've got kind of, it's, it's water walking, but not really. It is the XA-1000 surface skimmer. You literally just hop into a boat and start moving across the water for 25 seconds. That's all it does. It's a high speed little boat and it's fun. That's why I keep it because it's fun. Do I need it? No. Is it fun? Absolutely. <laughs> now we have gun shoes. I'm sure you've seen all the speed levelers besides me at least rave about these. Gun shoes. They're literally what they sound like. You put guns on your shoes and you go super fast for a brief amount of time. They go over water too, in case you're curious, which is nice. Now we have the gun pack. Just like it sounds, strap some loaded guns to your back. This one's actually kind of handy though if you pair it with goblin gliders. I don't use it very often like I should, I'm actually kind of bad about that. But if you pair them together, this will launch you into the air. Way up there. Just, it kind of hurts if you land, actually. So it helps with the goblin glider because you get some air and then you can get some distance. Handy for getting around places like Revendreth and Bastion, that's for sure. Now we've got some less creative stuff, but more important, auto hammers. These let you repair your gear anywhere. Especially in instances where you can't mount. I mean, you can mount in some of them, but you know what I mean. Sometimes that's really needed. Now for the more fun stuff and a little less practical. The deployable attire rearranger. What this is, is just a little mog station. Transmog. Change your gear. Now, yeah, if you have the yak, you could use that, but you can't always do that in dungeons. So... You want to look good on the fly, right? I mean, your transmog sets half your DPS, so it's important. Very important. Now we have one that's a little more practical. It's the Interdimensional Companion Repository. This is literally a hunter stable for your pets. It only lasts for two minutes, so I wish it lasted at least five. But it's really handy for hunters. You can whip it out if you need to change pets, like, Oh, hold on, guys, I have a lust pet. I can swap it out, you know. Very handy, especially if you're collecting pets a lot. You can, uh, and you're a beastmaster, you can swap out the first pet in your stable to uh, have a different pet for your talent. So that's pretty nice. Then we've got the magical intrusion dampener. Makes you immune to some annoyances. Persist through death, last 12 hours. Now what is this thing? <laughs> I call it the anti-troll Tron, mentally. It's not actually called that, but Leap of Faith, threats redirecting re abilities like, uh, you know, the Hunter and, and Rogue Ones, the Swap Blaster, stuff like that. There's, there's a few others that aren't listed, I can't remember them off the top of my head. It's fabulous if you have a priest healer that keeps yanking you like a jerk. <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Thermal Anvil. This one's really handy. If you want to use stuff, <laughs> as I give a great explanation, if you want to use stuff, if you're a blacksmith, a jewel crafter, a miner, an engineer, you'll likely want this because this f doubles as a forge and a smelt, a smelter. I guess a forge is the smelter. It's an anvil and a smelter. So must have for miners at least. You can smelt on the fly. Very nice. So, after some wonderful explanations that you can definitely tell are not scripted, let's move on to Utility D. Alright, now as you can see this one's a little less packed, which is probably a lot easier on your eyes, I'm sure. So let's start on the left. This is what I call the baby corner. What I mean by that is these are some items that I still keep on me that are really only usable by characters under level 50. Not including level 50, I know, trust me, it's a little annoying. So let's take a look at what they are because they do still help me out on lobbies. So this is the Shrouding Potion. Shrouds you from nearby enemies so you seem less threatening to them. Level 49 and under. 
Now, since my best friend and I speed level a lot, and sometimes she'll carry me, or I her, uh, this is really handy to have on the low character if you're like running through a dungeon or something, and you don't want that low B character pulling everything and getting nailed. This will help reduce threat on that character, so it's, it's still handy, it still has its uses. Then we've got the, here we go, Organic Discombobulation Grenade. Whew, said it right. This literally is a polymorph bomb, which is pretty rad, and I was super excited to use it in Shadowlands, but alas, you can't use it on targets above level 50. Now, you can use it as a level 50, so you can use it in old content, you just can't use it on Shadowland stuff, so that's too bad. But anyways, this is handy. You get into, in, get yourself into a pickle, throw a bomb at it, and suddenly they're sheep. Sheep bomb. <laughs> All right. Now here's some more water walking elixirs. Looks like I need to restock on these. These are the low level ones, whereas in the first tab, these are the higher level ones, which are a little more expensive, because these require 35 plus. Now these ones here require only level 15 plus. Now why don't I keep both of them? I like blue. Yes, I know that's kind of a silly reason, but that's my reason. So I keep this low level one here for our little lobies. And then we come to my favorite potion of all, the Sky Step Potion, and you can't use it above level 50. So very sad. <sighs> this got me through mount farming for the Bruto. I will miss you. But anyways. It increases mirror movement speed by 150% and lets you hover for 8 seconds. So you can even use it over water. It's very handy. But the effect on it is my favorite. You just get this glowy arcane ball and fly around on it. I mean, you're not actually flying, but you feel like you are. It's really cool. Anyways, moving on, we've got the Cracked Radnix Control Gem. Now this literally puts you on a mini Legion ship at high speed for a few seconds. <laughs> it's just another little speed item. The only downside is it's unique, so you can only hold one at a time, but it does have three charges, so it, it, it has its places. I think it's more of a fun flavor item for me, honestly. Moving on to the next, we've got the White Smoke Flare. Now, I don't use these very often, but sometimes these are nice when I want to mark a location in game, and I don't feel like using the uh, you know the raid markers because this, these are more fun, I think. Anyways, it literally makes a white plume of smoke for five minutes, which is pretty cool. Moving to the next, we've got the Stealth Man Fifty Four. This one's the one that really made me sad when they nerfed it. You can't use it above level forty nine anymore. So when this little stack runs out, I probably won't have any more. But what it does is it's basically the Night Elf Racial, but for everybody. So long as you don't move, you can be stealthed. This is fabulous in PvP, and I used to use it a lot. It's probably why they nerfed it, but you know what? It is what it is. So I still use this on my lobies, even though I don't really PvP anymore. Now, uh, we've got the Comfortable Riders Barding, but this isn't necessarily, like, always here. What this is, is mount equipment that keeps you from being dazed and dismounted while mounted. So you run whole through a whole bunch of enemies, you won't get dazed or dismounted. Which I think is a must-have because there's nothing that infuriates me more than riding through, getting smacked by a tiger, and getting dismounted and have to fight it. That actually aggravates me to no end, so I put these on all of my characters. So as I make new characters, as soon as they get riding, I slap that on them. Next one here, we've got Elixir of Tongues. This lets you talk to the opposite faction, which is really cool. And I have uh, lots of opposite faction characters, so this comes in handy. Especially when you see... <laughs> it's really handy in PvP, too, because when they're, you see some orc or human or whatever the opposite faction for you is yelling at you, you want to see what they're saying, right? Well, you can yell right back, too. <laughs> Not that they'll be able to see, but it's pretty sweet. Now we've got the Violet Truffle. You ever wanted to speak Shathyar? That's the old god language, by the way. This lets you do it. 
That's right, it's the Shathyar Shroom. You get so high, you can talk to old gods. I don't condone it, but you know what? It's fun. <laughs> Moving right along, we've got chocolate cookies. Yes, I know, I have my Shathyar mushrooms right next to my chocolate cookies. Bite me. <laughs> All this cookie does is it makes you feel a little better. It just gives you a buff that says that. It doesn't do anything else. But you know what? I love cookies. So here we go. Cookies. Now we've got the grilled Nasher. Which probably should be next to the uh, Violet Truffle, but whatever. The grilled Nasher is an item that will let you take the form of a Kathir. So long as you're in the vision of Nizoth from BFA, you have to go inside and use it there. But what I like to do with it is I will go inside with the character, use it, come, and it, it lasts while you come back out. Well, kind of. You use the Grilled Nasher inside a vision. You don't have to go into the vision itself, just the little, like, loading area with Rathian. And then you can use one of these, a Reflecting Prism. I mean, you have to have a friend for this, but it works. Use the Reflecting Prism on him, and you'll uh, keep the appearance for five minutes. So you can uh, RP as a, as a Kathir. And I have a Kathir character, so that's kind of fun. And then we have the Deviant, Savory Deviant Delight. This does a lot of things. I don't really remember what it does because I don't use them that often. I need to look up the list, in fact. I'll probably show you what it is on the right. So, uh, but it does things. I think it like turns you into skeletons or shrinks you or something. I don't remember. It's been a while. But it's another flavor toy. Now I have a few flavor toys, I call them flavor toys, here because the next tab is full. <laughs> so that's Utility D. Let's move to the next tab. So we are out of the Utility section and into the more fun section. This is what I call the Toys tab. Obviously, the, or these, these aren't the collectible toys that go in your appearance tab. These are just flavor items that make things fun. Like I just mentioned, the Reflecting Prism. This lets you swap appearances with your party member. And boy howdy can you kind of abuse it with the right toys. <laughs> uh, I'll probably do a video on that later because you can break some things and it's fabulous. And by break, I don't mean actually break, I just mean visually break. But anyways, enough of that. Enchanted Dust. This makes you sparkly and shiny. That's, that's all it does. It just makes you sparkly and shiny. It's really fun because you can use it on anyone. So you can just throw it on someone standing at the auction house and they're like, what? Why, why am I sparkly? Who did this? And you just run away giggling like a little two-year-old. So anyway, now we've got the Elixir of Giant Growth. Just like it says, it makes you bigger when you drink it. This is great for some characters, especially in RP. Because, you know, not everybody's the same height, so, uh, yeah, he's kind of make up for that. Now we've got the Transmorphic Tincture. This, uh, it's not as useful as it used to be, but it's still fun. Um, it changes your gender, so if you're male, you can become female and vice versa for five minutes. Now, you can just go to the barber now and change that yourself permanently, but I still have these, as I don't need to change all my characters, so there we go. Now this one is the Potion of Illusion. It changes you to look like someone else. It's a kind of a fun thing. And some of these, you know, if you, if you haven't caught on by now, you can use with the Reflecting Prism. That's kind of the, the way you can break things. So I can make myself look like a Horde member, swap it with a friend, swap it to someone else, and suddenly everybody in the raid's a bear. <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, I know, I'm that person. Moving on, we've got the Drought of Raw Magic. Now this does various things, but the favorite effect that it has for me is it makes everything sparkly. Like, kind of sparkly and purple and very faint. Like there's little sparkly fireflies everywhere. Sparkles, did I say sparkles? It has sparkles, by the way. <laughs> now we've got Moon Glow. This is a holiday drink from the Lunar Festival. It doesn't last long at all, but it makes you kind of glowy, like, well, like the drink says, moon glow. You look like glowy moon colored, and I think it's cool. And then we've got the F Major's Frothy Coffee. I like coffee, but that's not why I have this, because in-game, this sobers you up a little, so if you drank too many of these, or we 
get plastered on Brewfest, we can drink some frothy coffee and get rid of that atrocious wobbly screen, because boy howdy, does that make me sick. Ugh. Alright, now we've got Elixir of Dream Vision. Now this one's a little funky. This item lets you basically pass out and explore areas that are too dangerous to explore in person. Now, you drink it and it basically lets you walk around as if you were dead. But you're not actually dead. You're just in a vision. Quote unquote. It's like going into the Emerald Dream before it was a thing, basically. I don't use it very often because it only works in like specific areas and it's not very clear where all you can use it, so someday I'll look up a list. And now we've got the Inky Black Potion. This darkens the world around you. It literally takes a lot of the light and sky effects and makes everything black and dark and spoopy, which is really cool. I like it. Uh, my bestie uses these like almost religiously. So these are pretty cool. And now we've got the life-giving seed. This turns you into a herb, a plant, a flower. You have to have herbalism uh, cataclysm 25 to be able to use it. Obviously this character doesn't, that's why this is red. But that's okay. Turning into a plant is fun. And yes, you can use it with this. <laughs> with the uh, reflecting prism. You get the idea. Now we've got the way to jack-o'-lantern from Hollow's End. You can throw these at people and run away laughing. That's why I like them. Similar, in, in, in the similar vein of thought, we've got snowballs. I like throwing snowballs at people occasionally. It's nice. I think it's fun. Now, if we could have the little paper zeppelins, if I could stock up on those, I would keep those too. But those are really hard to get because they only come out of Blingtron, which kind of sucks. And then we've got the candy cane. This just sticks a candy cane in your mouth. And in fact, I think it's kind of cute. Because I'm sucking on a candy cane. I can pretend it's a sucker. Or I can pretend it's a cigarette, which is what I do with some of my characters. Just, you know, RP reasons. So that is the toys slash flavor tab. So, yeah, the fun items. All right, let's move on to the next, shall we? Now, these next two tabs will take half the time of explanation because it's not specific items. Like I mentioned before, this is the transmog tab. Any BOE that we get at all, we stuff it in here and then we can go through it and see if we know the appearance or not. Like these ones, I don't know these ones, so I stuffed them over onto the right. These ones here, I know, my best friend knows, so these here are going to be sold, disenchanted, or whatever later, depending on what they are. So that's literally it for this tab, that's all this one does. It's just a dump tab for, for, for gear. And then we can move right on to the profit tab, which is a similar thing. It's basically the main dump tab where, like I mentioned earlier, everything that's random in our bags that we don't want, extra pets, drums we can't use anymore, mats, so on and so forth. We stuff it in here and then I sell it later. So pretty simple. As you can see, I do not have the 8th tab. That requires the state classy achievement. And it seems to be a shock to many, but I do not have that achievement yet. Because that requires a combination of every race and class combo. So like, you know, panda priest, panda monk, panda mage. All of them, except for allied races. To be in the guild, max level, and at least honored. And as you can imagine, I actually don't have every single race class combo in the game because that would require like two full accounts to be able to do so. It's a lot of characters, but one day it's on my list. So there you have it. That is what is in my bank. Now you're probably noticing I don't have any raid buff food. Well, I don't really use it on all of my characters. That is any raid buffs or alchemy buffs, whatever that I want. I keep on my main that I'm taking through Torghast, for example, or if I decide to go in dungeons, that just stays in my main character's bags. I don't keep them in the bank because I don't do that on 
99.9% .9 of my characters. So, there you have it. That's my bank. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, it's never too latte.